In the series Kaiju Number 8, Kaiju are monsters that attack society far and wide. Their origin is completely unknown. However, for centuries, they have terrorized humanity without relent, forcing the world to take arms and fight back any way they can. Every Kaiju is different, coming in a myriad of shapes and sizes. Even whole separate species and colonies exist entirely apart from each other, all stemming from some unknown place. Because of this, the Anti-Kaiju Defense Force, a military faction dedicated to slaying these monsters, has designated them with classes to differentiate between them. Kaiju are rated by something called Fortitude Level, similar to a Richter scale for earthquakes, that makes it easy to deem a Kaiju's threat level and how many officers to dispatch in every situation. Yoju class and Hanju class Kaiju are small and mid-range creatures that are the most common attack on society. But after they eclipse an 8.0 Fortitude, they become classified as Daikaiju, critical level threats that can potentially reduce multiple cities to rubble if not stopped quickly enough. Some Daikaiju can be so unique, they are identified by the Defense Force through numbers in order to separate them from the mindless foot soldiers. Fifteen identified Kaiju have emerged throughout recent history, with over half of them showing themselves in the last year alone. In this video, I'm going to be going over 12 out of those 15, as Kaiju numbers 3, 5, and 7 respectively have either not been revealed yet, or lost to time. However, I'm gonna structure this a little bit differently than my other ranking videos. The identified kaiju will be split into three categories and I'll be going through each one by one. The first category will be the manufactured kaiju born out of the experiments from kaiju number nine, the major antagonist of the series and current reigning king of kaiju. Afterwards, we'll move into the numbered kaiju that have been weaponized, previous unique die kaiju threats that have been neutralized and had their corpses converted into weapons for the Defense Force's greatest warriors to wield. And the final segment will be for the remaining two kaiju who just don't simply fit into any real category and are simply different breeds from everyone else. So whether you enjoy hearing in-depth explanations and backstories about characters, or frankly, just like power scaling, this is the experience for you. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for future content, and we'll get right into it. But most importantly, thank you for watching. So this section will consist of the five double-digit kaiju, each created after kaiju number nine absorbed Isao Shinomiya and kaiju number two, vastly strengthening the results of its experiments with kaiju DNA and allowing it to manufacture identified die kaiju class threats all with a fortitude of 9.0 or higher. Almost every one of these kaiju was created as a direct counter to one of the anti-kaiju defense force's most reliable assets, each born for a specific individual purpose to divide and conquer the humans. Kaiju number 14 was specifically created by number 9 in order to counter Mina Ashiro's indomitable marksmanship. It has a fortitude level of 9.0 and is indeed Dai Kaiju class. Number 14 takes the odd geometrical shape of a parallel pipette. Embedded on each of these sides is a smiling and creepy looking face. Capable of firing large destructive energy beams from each of its four mouths, number 14 can decimate large ranges of cityscape in a circular motion while also using its durable force field to ignore any and all incoming fire that may try to attack. But what makes number 14 a unique threat is its ability to teleport erratically and across large distances, making it almost impossible to pin down in one location. Kaiju number 14 is eventually taken out of the sky by Mina Ashiro, standing no real chance against the captain of the third division's intense sniping skills. However, number 14 was one of the only kaiju to have a secondary purpose after death as its corpse was able to convert itself into a portal that would allow number 9, the new king of kaiju, to travel wherever 14 died at, with what seems to be a sibling kaiju number 14, colored white instead of black, and was left behind at the kaiju's headquarters for this exact purpose. Following the trend of its siblings, Kaiju number 11 was modified to counter First Division Captain Gen Narumi and his numbers weapons Future Sight. With a fortitude of 9.0 and an odd whale-shaped head with a fin on its back, Kaiju 11 also has gills strapped across its torso and was first spotted sucking up fish from the ocean and accidentally making them rain from the sky. This is possible because of Kaiju number 11's special ability called Hydrokinesis, bestowing the Kaiju the power of controlling bodies of water for offensive 
and defensive purposes. Number 11's power is more effective the larger the bodies of water that it's surrounded by are. However, it is able to bring water to the surface from underground sewer systems if it requires more. Being a Daikaiju class, Number 11 is easily able to cause destruction to the city, be it from shooting high-velocity water bullets or massively increasing its density and size through shape-shifting to strike people or objects with charged-up power. Its high endurance also allowed it to withstand damage and keep up with a Defense Force Division Captain. Although, realistically, Kaiju Number 11 was only able to get one over on Gen Narumi by countering his Future Sight ability, taking advantage of the fact the Division Captain could only read attacks from the kaiju's main body and not the water he controlled externally. Uniquely, Number 11 is also one of the only two of its siblings to have any real personality. The kaiju is quite talkative and condescending to its opponents in battle, taunting Gen specifically by claiming it already knows the counter to all of its moves. This is because the kaiju was bestowed with all of Isao Shinomiya, the former director general of the entire Defense Force's memories, granting Number 11 a detailed understanding of all the Defense Force's secrets. Kaiju Number 11 was eliminated by Gen Narumi after the latter revealed his evolved synchronization state, proving that Number 11 was only truly a match for the division captain when it had the handicap over him, not nearly being as skilled in combat as it boasted. The closest of its siblings to resemble their father number 9, Kaiju number 13, ironically, is also the most primitive and base instinctual of its siblings. Seemingly unable to talk or even coherently understand its surroundings and actions, Kaiju number 13 is instead defined by its high level of competitiveness and its drive to complete its goals as quickly as possible. Its first appearance being on the freeway, trying to race and outrun cars driving next to it. While it was not specifically created to counter one of the Defense Force's key assets, Number 13 was able to reach a fortitude level of 9.2, the third highest out of any kaiju in history, brought about by its desire to defeat Kafka Habino, kaiju number 8 in battle. It ultimately is no match for the anomaly that is kaiju number 8, but before being promptly deleted by the latter in one punch, number 13 is able to decimate the entire first division, the strongest squad in the defense force on its own. It takes absolutely no clear damage from any of the division's rifles, missiles, or freeze rounds, basically ignoring every single attack while being able to perception blitz its enemies with extreme speeds and reflexes. Because it can shapeshift, it can also inflate its muscles to an insane degree to power up its already impressive attack power. Unfortunately, Kafka took number 13 out before it was able to show its full strength, but its power must have been crippling to single-handedly take out a division with no signs of taking damage. Kaiju number 12 was engineered to counter 3rd Division Vice Captain Hoshina Soshiro. It is the fully completed and final rendition of what Kaiju number 10 was supposed to be a mid sized Daikaiju class threat that's able to defeat its enemies through rigorous close quarters combat. Kaiju number 12 carries a fortitude level of 9.0, despite not being taller than a small building. Its more compact size does little to stop its attack power, able to send Defense Force members flying and create large shockwaves that scar the city just from its bare hands. Combining this solid striking strength with extreme speed, Kaiju number 12 is able to even outpace Vice Captain Hoshina in physical combat, the Defense Force's current greatest hand to hand combatant. Like most kaiju, number 12 is able to twist and contort its body with shape shifting. The kaiju using this ability to transform its arms into flesh blades for sword fighting. Number 12 can even detach these flesh blades and regrow the missing limb to wield it like a proper katana. Number 12's most devastating trait was its ability to learn and adapt to its opponents at impeccable rates. Able to completely mimic Hoshina's single sword style combat after only witnessing it a handful of times, and even perform it at a slightly higher level which is impressive considering this is a fighting technique that took Hoshina his whole life to build upon, copied in mere moments. As a whole, Number 12 was able to surpass both its prototype Number 10 and its weapon wielder Hoshina Soshiro in every possible category. Honestly, Number 12 would have surely defeated them too had they not managed to reach 100% synchronization and create an opening through teamwork. Number 12 surely could have reached even grander heights had it been allowed to fight more people and continually adapt to grow its skills and develop. But unfortunately, this was as far as it went. 
The only known kaiju to have female anatomy, and one of the few to actually maintain a personality, kaiju number 15 was created to counter 1st Division Officer Kikaru Shinomiya. In fact, the kaiju was manifested to mirror Kikaru in almost every way, a result of number 15 being engineered from Isao Shinomiya's memories of his daughter. This ended up making the young kaiju not only look like a carbon copy of Kikaru in its human disguise, but also in kaiju number 15 having the same rambunctious and arrogant personality. In its kaiju form, number 15 looks similar to a ballerina-esque alien, surrounded by large brains attached to its head and waist, while having a notable crater where its actual mind would reside. Unfortunately, whether by design or side effect, kaiju number 15 also inherited the original Kikaru Shinomiya's parental trauma, born with an innate desire for her father, kaiju number 9's love and admiration. This created an intense drive to impress number 9 and exceed expectations, though Realistically, due to the latter's pure lack of care for any of its creations, this was an impossible goal. While it garnered Kaiju number 15 exceptional growth and killing ability, it stunted its maturity and created unhealthy behavior, such as its need to torture and taunt the human Kikaru Shinomiya instead of just killing her immediately like it was ordered to do. In regards to its power level, Kaiju number 15 is the most versatile of its siblings. It has access to the common Kaiju abilities of firing energy beams and shape-shifting, but number 15 is able to utilize them both at a much higher level than ever seen before. She's capable of firing smaller, more compressed sonic booms from the crater in her head that can create holes in faraway buildings and launch entire platoons to their death. Number 15 is also able to massively expand her body into tentacles that outstretch into the ground and merge with debris to create large axe like weapons. Her shape shifting is so exceptional, number 15 can change from human to kaiju form and back again in an instant, something not even kaiju number 9 can do without consuming a human first. Number 15 uses this to switch from close quarters melee combat right into kaiju attacks in the middle of her combos, able to mix in multiple scattered energy beams while in the midst of throwing physical attacks with her hands or feet. All of this complemented by number 15's high agility and speed, perception blitzing even Shinomiya Kikaru, the fastest warrior the defense force has to offer, overwhelming her with the number of attacks number 15 can lay on at once. The fact number 15 can even dodge and outmaneuver a numbers weapon master of Kikaru Kikaru's caliber is impressive enough, but number 15's durability and endurance is also incomparable to its siblings, able to tank full strikes from Kikaru's axe, which have shown the power to split Daikaiju class Kaiju in half before. And even when she is critically struck by damage, number 15's regeneration pace is unmatched as well, having its body tore to pieces on multiple occasions, only to control its individual separated limbs and come back together, or surprisingly, continue fighting while disembodied. Number 15's most unique trait, however, is its psychogenic attack. By launching multiple energy segments and connecting them to her target, Number 15 can invade a victim's mind and lock them in a trance of Number 15's making. After performing what Number 15 calls a mind hack, it gains complete access to the target's mind, sifting through all of their memories and emotions to collect various traumatic events and replaying them as hallucinations in the victim's imagination to force a mental break. Meanwhile, in the real world, the target is frozen and unable to move. Kaiju number 15 can still coherently control its body in the real world, able to land a killing blow or perform different actions entirely, peeking in and out of what's happening in the subject's mind for as long as they're in contact. Despite not having the highest fortitude. In my opinion, out of the six double-digit kaiju, number 15 is clearly the most capable and intelligent. She was fully self-aware of her own existence, to the point she needed to be emotionally manipulated by kaiju number 9 in order to properly be used in its plans. Number 15 actually was the inciting incident of the major cataclysm that starts her sibling's attack on the defense force, and she was also knowledgeable of the plan to merge into an all-powerful kaiju with her siblings to take on Kafka Hibino, kaiju number 8. Sadly, despite Despite being what appeared to be instrumental in Number 9's plans, the King of Kaiju wouldn't even look her way as Number 15 perished from Kikaru's final blow. Next up are all of the weaponized Kaiju as well as their respective masters. 
Each of these numbered kaiju has either had their reigns ended or allowed themselves to be tamed by their wielders willingly, all of them having their own individual relationships and quirks. We'll be discussing both the numbered kaiju and the associated soldier that wields them in detail for this segment. The daughter of the Director General of the Defense Force, Isao Shinomiya. Kikaru Shinomiya is the newest weapons master for Kaiju Number 4, and the first person to show compatibility with the weapon since her late mother, Hikaru Shinomiya, used it in her prime. As the child of two of the most powerful anti-Kaiju soldiers, even as a first-year rookie, Kikaru displays captain-level prowess in combat. This is because, since expressing interest in the career as a youth, Kikaru has been trained relentlessly to become the best anti-kaiju slayer in history, due in part because their family has a legacy to uphold. But because of her mother's death at the hands of kaiju number 6, Isao Shinomiya was especially tough on Kikaru, creating trauma from a young age of always needing to reach her parents' expectations and never feeling like she's good enough, despite Kikaru surpassing all of her recruitment squad, even to this day. This entitlement to glory and inferiority complex turned Kikaru into a very arrogant and proud prideful person, instantly disregarding people Kikaru views as beneath her and not hiding her dislike toward others. She is very polite to her superior officers though in order to keep up appearances, keeping in line with the daughter of a high-ranking political official. Underneath the Sundere Act though is a compassionate young woman who truly cares about her teammates and the people close to her. This personality is just pushed beneath who Kikaru feels she needs to be in order to earn her father's approval. The loss of her mother, Hikaru, made Kikaru feel like she needed to replace her, and after the loss of Director General Isao, the realization she'll never receive the praise she so desires haunts Kikaru. Kikaru compensates for this trauma the only way she knows how, by working hard and always driving for better results, pledging to never let a comrade die on a battlefield she inhabits to make up for the death of her mother and father. It's this reason, on first try, Kikaru is able to exhibit 46% combat potential in her battle suit, even getting a special personalized weapon made for her specifically, something usually only done for high-ranking officers. Kikaru Shinomiya opens the series by being able to completely decimate an entire group of small yoju and their hanju leader with her reflexes. Combining this tactical skill with her battle axe made from the uni organ of a kaiju, Kikaru can amass the attack power to obliterate an entire target in one blow. Her battle axe comes equipped with a trigger that generates a shockwave for added strike strength or acceleration for Kikaru to blitz through lines of defense. By transforming her father Isao Shinomiya's signature combat technique, the squadron style, to better fit axemanship, Kikaru is able to overwhelm even Dai Kaiju level threats in close quarters, easily splitting through their tough exteriors or cutting limbs off, like in fights with Kaiju number 10 or the Gamma number 9 clone. Kikaru also displays exceptional tenacity and durability, fighting on despite taking heavy damage, both physical and mental, eventually managing to overcome her trauma, which she admits was her biggest weakness in her fight with Kaiju number 15, as the loss of her father and mother constantly would cause Kikaru to freeze up, even in times of maximum peril, something number 15 took advantage of. As the weapons master for Kaiju number 4, Kikaru is filling in the shoes of her mother, who was the former wielder of the weaponized Kaiju, a colossal flying beast with three eyes. Kaiju number 4 bestowed its wielder with blinding speed, making them the absolute fastest soldier in the defense force. When originally wielding number 4, Hikaru Shinomiya was able to utilize the weapon at its maximum potential and became legendary for her skill with it. Whatever spirit of Kaiju number 4 that remains in the combat suit finally remembers Hikaru, to the point her ghost is constantly projected to the current wielder in order to suggest how to better use it. When first synchronizing with number 4, Kikaru admits she felt very judged, and despite the massive power boost, would constantly find herself trying to keep up with her mother's memories. Although Kikaru is not able to reach 100% synchronization with number 4, her combat potential reaching 94% is still one of the highest recorded for a non-captain division officer. Able to keep up with the Defense Force's strongest soldier and Division 1 captain Gen Narumi when wielding number 4. 
She also massively benefits from the speed buff the weapon includes, making Kikuru's already impressive agility almost impossible for the human eye to keep up with. The suit can also extend wings, similar to number 4's original form, and grant the user the ability to fly. Kikuru Shinomiya was able to match a Daikaiju with a fortitude reading of 9.0 in battle tanking every single serious attack number 15 threw at her. And against all odds, Kikaru was even able to expose number 15's core twice. After finally vanquishing number 15, Kikaru makes sure to thank the monster, as now that Kikaru's biggest weakness was exploited, she's much stronger because of it. And with only 6% synchronization left to go, with a clear vision to emulate for the future, something tells me we haven't even come close to Kikaru's peak. And whether she believes it or not, her parents are definitely proud. The vice captain of the third division and the weapons wielder of Kaiju number 10, Soshiro Hoshina is the anti-Kaiju Defense Force's greatest soldier when it comes to close quarters combat and fighting small to mid-level Kaiju. Hoshina's hand-to-hand -hand and physical ability is said to even rival Gen Narumi, the current all-around strongest soldier in the entire organization. Soshiro is a member of the Hoshina clan, a traditional long-standing family of swordsmen who have defended Japan from Kaiju for generations. Unfortunately, as time has moved on and more advanced weaponry has been been created, eventually, close-range combat was ushered out altogether in favor of rifles and missiles. As graceful and commendable the Hoshina family was for their service and skill with the blade, nothing can destroy Kaiju much like a high-powered assault cannon. As the dawn of a new era emerged, most of Hoshina's family either abandoned the old ways to continue defending their country or retired altogether to let the new generation begin. Even Soshiro's older brother, said to be a prodigy when it came to swordsmanship, is now captain of the 6th division as a marksman. In their youth, Soichiro Hoshina, Soshiro's older brother, would constantly tease and belittle Soshiro's skills in battle. In part because Soichiro was an arrogant youth, but also because deep down, Soichiro was intimidated by Soshiro's potential, ironically just pushing Soshiro even deeper into his training and having the opposite intended effect of motivating the young boy. Now a full-fledged officer in the Defense Force, despite every person Soshiro's ever met telling him he needs to give up the blade and pick up a rifle, to this day, Soshiro never has. With dedication, guts, and a willingness to prove his existence the only way he's ever known how, Soshiro refuses to give up swordsmanship, truly living by the blade and dying by it. Thankfully, Soshiro met Mina Ashiro, the only superior officer that was willing to give Hoshina and his unique worldview a chance. In fact, it even gave Soshiro Soshiro an outlet to prove his worth, becoming one of the most skilled soldiers of the Defense Force in dismembering and dissecting the smaller kaiju. This created a large sense of loyalty to his division and his captain, having a willingness to support her any way he can. Soshiro Hoshina carries a mostly goofy and aloof personality, appearing very laid back and always making fun of his subordinates. A personality Soshiro created to compensate for everyone around him always looking down on him. Underneath this facade lies a very tactical individual, and Soshiro's serious nature is revealed whenever the man actually opens his eyes, showing the piercing red gaze beneath. In combat is where this no-nonsense policy takes center stage, holding nothing but murderous intent for the kaiju Soshiro deems a target. A master of the sword-slaying technique, a combat style that makes use of dual blades and an innate unleashed combat potential of 92%, Soshiro is able to absolutely blitz and demolish even Dai Kaiju level threats. When battling Kaiju number 8, Kafka couldn't even perceive how quickly Hoshina was shifting positions. Soshiro's accuracy is impeccable, and because of how hard and quick his slices can be, when paired with the sword slaying style, Soshiro's attacks can even extend past his physical form, creating sharp shockwaves through the air that are powerful enough to cut the limbs off identified kaiju like number 8 or 10. But what makes Soshiro so dangerous is his unpredictable nature and adaptability, constantly tricking opponents into thinking thinking he's one note or mundane, only to reveal Soshiro was setting up his opponent for an even more devastating combo. Soshiro can even outsmart the battle-loving Kaiju number 10 and continue to present the Fortitude 9.0 Giant Class Kaiju with a challenge even after he's transformed out of Hoshina's average weight class. Soshiro Hoshina is more than just speed and battle intelligence though. 
as not only is the attack power behind his slash attacks or projectile air cuts able to do serious damage, even barehanded Soshiro is quite capable. Well versed in the Director General's squadron style combat technique, Hoshina is completely rounded in every combat area to maintain his threat level at any cost. All of this is accomplished through harsh training and the tough grind Soshiro forces himself to endure, all in order to keep getting results in the world that rejects his way. This toughness is what allows Hoshina to battle regardless of critical injuries and push past his body's natural limits, getting the job done even when Soshiro's combat suit overheats. His endurance and durability is so impeccable, the man took a point-blank punch from a giant class 9.0 Daikaiju and was sent flying into a building just to make a joke and pick himself up afterwards. However, with all of that being said, Soshiro Hoshina is only one half of the comedy duo suit. Kaiju number 10 is one of the very first prototype creations born from Kaiju number 9's experimentation with Kaiju DNA. Powerful enough to lead large packs of smaller Kaiju and also hold a fortitude level of 8.3, Kaiju number 10 was blessed with intelligence and self-awareness, which became a stark drive to accomplish its goals and fight strong opponents. It attacked one of the Defense Force's bases in search of the strongest human it could find, and once finding out that person is Soshiro, ignores everything else in regards to his invasion besides having a fight with Soshiro. After defeated in round 1, it becomes a giant kaiju boasting a fortitude of 9.0 and requires most of the 3rd division to take it down at once. It was reduced to just a head and spine, although it kept its intelligence, refusing to speak to any of the researchers working on it and demanding to only speak to Soshiro, claiming it loved their fight so much, the emotions have bubbled up and have been unable to stop, commanding Soshiro to weaponize him so it could fight alongside Soshiro forever and experience the thrill of battle having no real allegiance to its species whatsoever, just an innate desire for intense violence. Afterwards, Kaiju number 10 becomes the very first weaponized Kaiju to retain its mental awareness, its large red eye staring directly out of the chest area of Hoshina's combat suit. The weaponized suit is also comprised of a large mechanical tail, which can become another blade if necessary. And with number 10 maintaining a will of its own, the mental link between Hoshina and number 10 creates a constant telepathic connection between the two. At first, their clashing personalities put them in danger. Number 10's reckless nature and willingness to put himself in harm's way for the fun of it directly clashes with Soshiro's more careful, thought-out style of manipulating the battle to suit his strengths. Even with the massive boost in power, their lack of cooperation lowers their combat aptitude. However, once Hoshina starts to take a back seat and indulge Number 10's bloodthirst, the kaiju reciprocates by taking the time to admire Soshiro's accuracy and patience in his blade work, the two managing to find a way to get along through their competitive nature and bickering back and forth, a reflection of how Soshiro's brother's insults acted as motivation for Soshiro in the past, creating a symbiotic relationship that benefits both parties and stat increases in all categories. It isn't until their battle with Kaiju number 12 though that the two of them truly understand each other, as Soshiro lies on the brink of death and number 10 risks it all to defend Hoshina. Number 10 manages to break all of Soshiro's walls and get to the main reason Soshiro is even in the defense force. It was never some sense of loyalty to Mina or Japan. It was never wanting to surpass his brother or proving his worth as a swordsman. Soshiro Hoshina fights because swinging the sword is fun. And upon this realization, Soshiro and Number 10 really aren't all that different. In fact, they're able to bring out the best in each other, a breakthrough that's more than enough to skyrocket the two synchronization to 100% becoming able to rise to any challenge necessary, vowing to pave their own path, creating a brand new fighting style on the fly in moments to defeat Number 12's insane adaptation. In the fight with Kaiju Number 12, Soshiro and Number 10 cut themselves down to their very core, two people who just love to fight. Battle is the only thing that proves their existence. And the amount of prowess Soshiro displays in this battle is insane, wielding the Hoshina single sword style and immediately overwhelming a 9.0 class Daikaiju whose sole instinct is to learn and grow better. It also shows the benefits of having a weaponized Kaiju with a will of its own, 
as Soshiro never would have been able to reach these heights without number 10 backing him up and helping him come to this epiphany. There are multiple moments number 10 saves Soshiro from death, and it's only by putting his full trust in number 10 that they can improvise a new attack style with little to no plan. The comedy duo suit of Hoshina and Kaiju number 10 are truly unique, and every single fight Hoshina's in, he provides more of a reason to be a higher rank than he'll probably end up sadly. Rino Ichikawa is an officer now currently assigned to the 4th Division that joined in the same recruitment year as Kafka Hibino, Kaiju No. 8. As the deterragonist of the series, Rino is a competent soldier in the Defense Force and a loyal partner to Kafka. And even more recently, Rino has become the weapons master for identified Kaiju No. 6, also known as the King of Kaiju. Starting from the beginning, Rino Ichikawa was an employee at Monster Sweep Inc., a kaiju corps disposal unit, and after having his life saved by Kafka Habino and witnessing the latter's transformation into kaiju number 8, Rino, initially a very reserved and quiet boy, opened up to Kafka and decided to stay by his side as the two prepared to enlist in the defense force. Unlike Kafka, Reno was able to excel using the anti-kaiju combat suit and bring out high percentage of it even on his first try, with multiple higher-ups in the force claiming Reno's skills surely have the potential to become captain level over time. Reno can easily run high speeds with a full-grown Kafka on his shoulders, and surprisingly, Reno also had the reflexes to dodge and attempt to even counter Kaiju No. 9's high-speed projectile attacks. In his short meeting with Kaiju No. 9, Reno is able to accurately assess what direction No. 9's bullets fire in, thanks to Kikaru's early encounter with the Kaiju. Reno was able to continue fighting and protect his comrade against the Dai Kaiju threat, even after being shot multiple times by Kaiju No. 9. Able to survive just long enough against these impossible odds for Kafka Habino to show up and save the day. This tenacity and undying loyalty to protect his peers is something that shines through Reno's quiet exterior, constantly allowing Reno to break his own limits and rise above any challenge he faces, ultimately making Reno the perfect candidate to try and synchronize with Kaiju number 6, as his inability to give up creates the kind of durability required to survive an ordeal like wielding a numbers weapon. In the case of the King of Kaiju, Kaiju number 6 receives its title for performing the most destructive, cataclysmic incident in known history. Leading an army of Hanju-class Kaiju, number 6 launched an all-out attack on the country and wasn't taken down until a total of 200 defense officers and 3 division captains were defeated along with it. An impressive feat in and of itself, one of the captains Kaiju number 6 killed was Hikaru Shinomiya, the weapons wielder for Kaiju number 4 and one of the strongest soldiers in defense force history. History. Kaiju number 6 was a colossal beast of pure destruction, with no other desire but to bring everything in front of it down. Having one of the highest fortitudes ever recorded of 9.6, even after it was defeated, the weaponized kaiju lie in cold storage, too powerful to be tamed by any officer attempting to synchronize with it. At least until Reno, who despite all odds and potential lethality of the merge, after only one month of training, Reno was able to create a baseline symbiosis with Kaiju number 6. Not as high of a synchronization like the rest of his peers, but enough to wield the King of Kaiju's power as his own and receive a significant stat increase in all categories. The King of Kaiju's unique ability is known as Cryokinesis, the power to conjure and control ice. In its original Kaiju form, wherever number 6 went, a gigantic blizzard followed and surrounded it. Weaponized and converted into a combat suit, when worn by Reno, the officer constantly emits a freezing energy that permeates around his location. This energy can then be converted into actual ice and is released from any limb Reno desires. Reno can make ice on his feet to stick to surfaces, or even drastically improve his speed to compete with and even outpace Daikaiju level threats. By placing his palm on and making contact with his enemies, Reno can flash freeze them almost instantly depending on how thick their exterior is. And combining this with the explosive freezing rounds fired from his rifle, Reno can even heavily buff the range of these ice shots to blow up and completely cover large distances of area. When Reno first used Kaiju No. 6's suit in combat, his overwhelming sense of loyalty and responsibility took away any self-awareness during the fight, turning Reno into a mindless Kaiju killing machine at the cost of causing massive internal damage to his muscles. Although his combat potential and synchronization with No. 6 rises from 43 
50% to 51, the toll and risk on Reno's body is so great, the officer literally snapped his own ankle just from moving harder and faster than he currently could handle. This reckless trance would also make Reno a liability by indiscriminately freezing the area around him. However, thanks to his relationship with his comrades and a want to fight equally by Kafka's side, he eventually overrides this rage episode, allowing Reno to properly wield Kaiju Number no. 6's strength and develop its power into a more reliable tool. The next time we see Reno, his numbers weapon has received a huge upgrade in the addition of 16 small portable cannons that surround Reno in circular fashion. These individual cannons are each capable of firing supremely debilitating freeze rounds that, when used in tandem with each other, can freeze an entire city block and incapacitate an entire group of Daikaiju class threats all at once. Reno also has access to a barrier shield that can endure energy beams shown to destroy entire buildings. It's unknown how much of his synchronization level Reno can rise to now, but it's assumed with his increase in range and effectiveness, as well as the more level-headed Reno can be while using his weapon, it's speculated it's significantly increased since we last saw Reno use number 6 in the trial run, now able to dispatch multiple Dai Kaijus with little to no effort, almost as fast as his partner Kaiju number 8 can, even if if Reno isn't bringing out 100% synchronicity, the power of the King of Kaiju is a devastating force of nature, and thankfully, in the good hands of Reno. With only about half of his full potential realized, it will surely be interesting to see what heights Reno can reach at maximum output. Gen Narumi is the current captain of the strongest squad in the Defense Force, Division 1, and also the Meister for the oldest numbers weapon in history, Kaiju Number 1. Gen is a unique case, not only having a bodysuit comprised of Kaiju Number 1's corpse designed to bring out its best qualities, but Gen Narumi also has had Kaiju Number 1's retinas surgically implanted into his eyes to achieve complete synchronization. The newly dubbed strongest officer in the Defense Force, Gen Narumi has usurped his mentor Isao Shinomiya's place since the latter took a more backseat approach to leading. This honor is not passed lightly, as Gen Narumi is indeed capable of bringing out over 98% of his combat potential in battle, the highest amount recorded without using one's numbers weapon. Under his surface level serious nature, Gen Narumi is a very immature and childish man. He's well known amongst the first division for constantly shirking responsibility and being a lazy good for nothing. Gen often disrupts important Defense Force meetings by talking down to his superiors or just not showing up at all, and his only concerns in life are truly playing video games, ego surfing on social media and arguing with negative comments, or blatantly just ignoring any aspect of his job that doesn't revolve around actually slaying Kaiju. However, all of these cons to his personality don't detract from the results Gen Narumi constantly delivers to the Defense Force. In his own words, Captain Narumi prioritizes skill above all else, whether it be from himself or the subordinates he chooses to enlist. Because once Gen is on a job, it's like a switch flips, coming off as an extremely capable captain and always accomplishing a mission without error. During battle, Gen Narumi wields a large double-edged bayonet rifle, capable of cutting and searing the wound with intense heat immediately after, which not only makes it harder for Kaiju to regenerate, it also allows Gen to switch between short, mid, and long-range fighting types instantaneously, firing powerful projectile shots while also mixing in and landing critical slash attacks in close quarters. These combos have so much attack power behind them, they can cripple a Daikaiju class threat in one attack if the target isn't durable enough to take it. Gen's easily able to overwhelm an opponent with this battle style through extreme levels of speed, which exceed the agility of even top-class kaiju like number 8 or 9. Gen's able to perception blitz almost anyone in the series with little competition, and can even dodge attacks that he's completely caught off guard with. Even if Gen is wounded, his endurance is almost at a comparable level to the hardened exterior of a Dai Kaiju, as he's able to withstand all the same devastating attacks kaiju number 8 can in their duo fight against kaiju number 9. Gen's physical skills are impeccable, potentially rival or going above Hoshina Soshiro, and being a direct student to Isao Shinomiya, the Director General, this is of little surprise. 
Trained in the general squadron style, Narumi has molded the combat techniques to better fit his chaotic approach to battle, and combined with his high intelligence and strategic adaptability, Gen created multiple additions to the squadron style, specifically aiding in bayonet fighting. When all of this latent talent is paired with Kaiju number one, the first identified Kaiju in history, Gen Narumi becomes an unstoppable force of nature. Little is known about number one's personality when it was a Kaiju, however the two beings have managed to achieve complete symbiosis and bring out the full release of their power. Isao Shinomiya notes number one's main trait as being a monster with quote unquote inescapable attacks, something Gen Narumi fills the shoes of very well, which may be why the two of them get along. Kaiju number one's main power was the gift of foresight. Number one's vision was enhanced to the degree it was able to see through targets and precisely pin point one's weak points and vulnerabilities. Even more terrifying though, number one was able to use this extra sensory to accurately analyze a victim's electrical impulses in their brain, granting kaiju number one what appeared to be precognition, allowing them to correctly predict an opponent's movements. With the retina implants and weaponized suit, Gen Narumi is able to synchronize with number one and completely adapt its enhanced vision and foresight into his already berserk fighting style. With the only downside being after overuse, it makes Gen's eyes bleed. But in exchange, Gen can outpace every single opponent he fights, kaiju or human, with his inescapable attacks. The foresight does come with one fatal weakness, in that it's unable to read the impulses of inanimate objects, since it requires analyzing the target's brainwaves, and is not really seeing into the future. Kaiju number 11 was able to abuse this fact by attacking and defending with water, throwing Gen Narumi off of his game thanks to having the memories of Isao Shinomiya. However, unknown to the late Director General, Gen Narumi had already evolved his numbers weapon past its original state as a kaiju, something never Never done before in the history of the Defense Force. By implementing multiple additional eyes into the weaponized suit, Gen is able to significantly increase the intensity and range of Number One's precognition, allowing the Weapons Master to perceive even more minuscule actions, such as the movement of electrons, temperature fluctuations in the terrain, or quite literally any detail of the environment the fight is occurring in, upgrading what would be pseudo-precognition into an actual ability to see into the future. This latch-ditch effort to improve his abilities into something that would finally wow his late mentor ends up being the thing that turns the fight with Kaiju number 11 around, letting Gen not only surpass his own weaknesses, but finally transcend Isao and step out of the Director General's shadow. It's hard to not acknowledge Captain Narumi as the Defense Force's new strongest officer, even with all of his personality faults, as despite everything, Gen's the living proof of his own motto. Being well-mannered and proper in the eyes of the public means nothing in the face of undeniable skill. Isao Shinomiya is the former Director General of the entire Defense Force, as well as the Weapons Master of Kaiju No. 2, a human being who was stated to be the strongest soldier in history. Isao was instrumental in Japan's survival against the Kaiju species for over 30 years. Although Isao claims he's a shadow of his former self in his elder age, he still has all the aura of someone that was the most powerful, whether he wants to admit it or not. A very serious and to the point man, Isao's motivation in life has always been doing whatever necessary for the survival of his people, present and future. He is a director general who is not above converting identified numbered kaiju into weapons and subjecting potential compatible soldiers to the side effects of synchronization. This is because Isao believes in the next generation and is therefore harsh on them, appearing cold and careless, while in his mind, he's only building them up for the horrors of a world of kaiju. Isao was known to be particularly ruthless to the members of the first division, where he was their captain training prodigies like Gen Narumi and turning them into prestigious warriors under his wing. Isao was also tough on his daughter Kikaru, overworking her with unrealistic expectations from a young age. It's no surprise all of this behavior is most likely compensation for the loss of his wife Hikaru Shinomiya, another legendary weapons wielder and defense force captain who met her on timely demise when Kaiju Number no. 6's rampage occurred, coming to the realization that if even Hikaru, his beloved, was mortal, then so was every soldier who was worth even the slightest of a damn, creating the mentality that brought Isao to break down those he cared about, hoping they would become even greater because of it. 
Some coping with the stressful tough love act better than others. Isao Shinomiya is paired with identified kaiju number two, the second ever kaiju to be deemed worthy of notation. Kaiju number two was of a large reptilian species with a dense, rocky exterior, powerful enough to destroy an entire city before it was eventually brought down by the defense force. Its fortitude level is currently unknown. Kaiju number two's corpse was then weaponized and converted into a full body suit for the director general to wear, also accompanied by two large gauntlets with what looked like rockets attached to them, allowing for proper power charging in his attacks. And despite what Asao deemed as Kaiju number two's extreme sense of pride, whether through skill or utter dominance, the director general's combat potential was more than exceptional to bring out 100% synchronization of their combination. Even without being attached to his gauntlets, Isao displays exceptional physical prowess. Not only is the director general able to easily outspeed Kafka Habino, Kaju number 8, at almost identical, if not faster speed to a fired bullet, Isao can tear off Kafka's bare flesh with his fingers for blood samples. It can be assumed Isao's base attack power is astounding, but when wearing his FS-1002 weaponized gauntlet, it exceeds anything humanity is possible of. Just a punch from Misao is capable of rendering a crater in the ground or causing a massive explosion on the surface of its intended target. Part of Isao's destructive potential is thanks to the added boost of Kaiju Number no. 2's sonic booms, which ripple through every one of Isao's attacks, increasing striking strength and most importantly, range, and are also capable of releasing projectile booms that can knock opponents long distances away and cause internal damage. The buff from number two shockwaves allow Isao to even match the attack power of Fortitude 9 plus Kaiju like number eight or nine on somewhat equal ground. The weaponized number two also comes with the added benefit of an insanely strong lightning bolt attack, gathering between Isao's arms and firing at an opponent as if Kaiju number two was to take form and launch the attack itself. When fully focused and placing all of Isao's life energy into this beam attack, he can momentarily surpass the limits of a human and delete an entire skyscraper from existence with its power. On the flip side, the weapon also grants its user an insanely durable shield, which Isao himself admits is the only reason he can survive critical blows from kaiju like 8 or 9. The director general was able to give off the impression of a die kaiju with the way he fought, adapting his close quarters combat into a fighting style that would be passed down for generations, known as the squadron style combat technique. Focusing on using lower body strength to empower one's fists, the multiple different uses of that style fit perfectly with number two's gauntlets, allowing Isao to reach the peak of the defense force, while also permanently leaving his mark on the society he helped protect his whole life. A great leader and an unmatched soldier, Isao Shinomiya was truly a one-of-a-kind person. This final section will involve the two final numbered kaiju who simply are just anomalies that deserve to be placed in their own category. Both of them not only exhibit unrivaled power compared to the rest of their species, they are each capable of so many more things than the other numbered kaiju and weapon wielders. Frankly, it's not even fair to put them on the same rankings. Also, because both of them clearly haven't begun to reach their peak or display everything they have to offer, the two of them aren't necessarily ranked above or below each other. I would just consider these two on a separate scale of their own, and I'll leave it up to you to decide who's the real top rank in the comments. The main character of the entire series, Kafka Habino is a unique case in all of history, a human that has the ability to turn into a kaiju, becoming the eighth identified numbered kaiju after a random small insect type crawled into his mouth. Kafka's journey throughout the series involves coming to terms with his new transformation and being loyal to the promise he made to Mina Ashiro, captain of the third division and Kafka's childhood friend, that he would always be by her side, defeating kaiju kaiju with her. A man in his early 30s who originally worked for Monster Sweeper Inc., the Kaiju Corpse Disposal Unit, after several years in that line of work, Kafka meets Rino Ichikawa, a young teenager who only became employed by Monster Sweeper to gain experience for joining the Defense Force. This upsets Kafka, who, despite making that early childhood promise with Mina, was unable to ever pass the recruitment exam for the Anti-Kaiju Defense Force. 
After multiple failed attempts and Mina becoming a division captain who's a household name in the country, eventually Kafka and his promise became forgotten and lost to time. However, after meeting Reno and saving his life from a kaiju accident, Kafka swears to make one last attempt and join the defense force to reunite with Mina and make good on their childhood vow. Ironically, directly after this is when Kafka involuntarily becomes a kaiju, so he's got a couple problems in his way before he accomplishes that. Kafka starts off being unable to control his kaiju powers, almost exposing himself multiple times or having his limbs transform against his will, until eventually he gains the freedom to train and experiment with the form once his identity is out in the open and he's accepted by the rest of the defense force. Thankfully so, because the main reason Kafka continually failed the recruitment exam is made clear when the Bachelor is unable to even bring out 1% of his combat suit's potential. In fact, part of the reason Vice Captain Hoshina claims to have passed Kafka at all is because Soshiro finds it comical there's someone that sucks that much. Of course, Soshiro also suspects Kafka of being a kaiju at the time, so that plays a part in it as well. Even after months of training, the most Kafka is able to bring out of his suit is 1%. But thankfully, Kafka doesn't have to worry about fighting as a human, as once Kafka is able to get the grasp on controlling his kaiju form, he genuinely becomes one of the most powerful creatures to exist. Reaching a maximum fortitude level of 9.8, the highest recorded in history for any kaiju, when fighting as kaiju number 8, Kafka is able to absolutely obliterate even Dai Kaiju threats in one punch. As Kafka develops and learns how the kaiju body's shape-shifting and regeneration powers work, he can use kaiju number 8's power to stimulate and improve his attacks by manifesting thrusters on his limbs, or even twist his entire torso 180 degrees to catch a close-ranged opponent off guard. When fully charging up his attacks, kaiju number 8 is able able to generate a massively powerful electrical energy that flows through his body and drastically increases his damage output. Even when up against Soshiro Hoshina, an extremely fast, devastating threat for any humanoid-sized kaiju, Kafka is able to continually replace any cut-off limbs as well as perceive Soshiro's quick attacks enough to block or even attempt to dodge. Kafka is quite fast himself, able to scale entire towns in no time to reach people in need of help. He can jump towering heights and even perception blitz other Dai Kaiju like number 9 when serious or enraged. Kafka can also use his shape-shifted thrusters in order to increase the speed or distance cross as well. And because his senses are also stimulated to their peak, he can easily perceive other kaijus in his vicinity in order to pinpoint their exact locations and even their weak spots. Because Kafka is a kaiju, he also gains access to their tough hide and exterior when transformed into number 8. And due to the shape-shifting ability, Kafka can harden specific locations of his body to better endure damage. The fully transformed Kafka was able to take multiple punches from Isao Shinomiya, the weapons wielder of Kaiju number 2, and the human with the absolute highest attack power in the defense force. Isao's punches create craters, and Kaiju number 8 can clash with these blows, as well as provide more efficient counterattacks against them. Isao Shinomiya admits he would have died had number 2's shield not been in place for Kafka's barrage of attacks, and in this fight specifically, the uncontrolled number 8 shows its ability to enlarge itself and grow in size to even further increase its stats and range. On top of all of this, Kafka also has access to more common kaiju abilities like firing energy beams, which is just the electrical charges Kafka channels take in physical form. However, because Kafka is still a human at the end of the day, the man has a limited stamina and cannot maintain total kaiju form for long. Regeneration and utilizing the electrical energy he can emit is the most draining specifically on him. However, after becoming accepted by Soshiro Hoshina as kaiju number 8 and beginning training with the vice captain, Kafka becomes well versed in the director general squadron style combat technique, learning how to properly use Kaiju number 8's power more efficiently, cutting out unnecessary movements and overextensions by primarily focusing his power from the lower body. Although untransformed, Kafka is absolutely hopeless against any combatant with actual skill. When used in tandem with partial Kaiju transformations, Kafka can generate more than enough power in small bursts to overpower most if not all threats that come before him. Again, as one of the strongest kaiju ever identified with a 9.8 fortitude rating, overwhelming enemies is a very simple task. Extending the duration of Kafka's kaiju mode just means it can deliver destruction much more reliably and for longer. 
And despite Kafka having no real battle tact, his long career in kaiju disposal has led to Kafka holding a lot of valuable knowledge on kaiju's weak points and what puts them at a disadvantage, being much more aware of the kaiju anatomy than a mere soldier would, making Kafka not just an exceptional threat as a kaiju, but a valuable teammate and defense force soldier who contributes any way he can to help his comrades. There's no telling how far kaiju number 8 can go, but one thing's for sure, there's only one other character who could possibly contend for the crown of king. The main antagonist of the entire series, Kaiju Number 9 is a humanoid kaiju that was blessed with individuality and a cold personality. In a very rare case, Number 9 is able to not only communicate with humans, but efficiently plan and adapt to their actions. While it certainly wasn't the case when it was born, since absorbing Director General Isao Shinomiya and Kaiju Number 2, Kaiju Number 9 lives up to his newest title of King of Kaiju. Starting from the beginning, Kaiju Number 9 made his first appearance during the recruitment exam, where he arrived just after the extermination of the pack of Kaiju released into the test zone. Kaiju Number 9 was not only able to revive the dead creatures, but it seemed as if his sentience granted Number 9 control over the lower born Kaiju. Since then, it's appeared to be Kaiju Number 9's sole mission to trample on the anti Kaiju Defense Force, spearheading multiple operations and uniting all the different and once uncooperative Kaiju species under one common goal complete and total human extinction. Kaiju number 9 has been called a virus by the defense force, because unlike most kaiju who are mindless and predictable, number 9 not only learns from its mistakes, but also knows how to take advantage and reveal its enemy's weak points. Kaiju number 9 has consistently caught the defense force off guard and even outright manipulated them into the palm of his hand. Its cold and calculating demeanor allow it to make executive decisions with in-depth thought, such as sparing innocent lives of it doesn't benefit number 9 at the time, or vice versa, specifically targeting innocent lives to distract its opponents. Although capable of holding a grudge against those who interfere with its plans or present unforeseen outcomes, Kaiju number 9 is smart enough not to let his pride get the best of it, even willing to turn its back on enemies and flee if that's what best suits number 9 at the time. As the newly crowned King of Kaiju, number 9 is not only able to revive dead Kaiju corpses, but it seems number 9 has some kind of telekinetic control over them, able to manipulate them and use them as shields for defense or projectile attacks. Kaiju number 9 is also able to fuse itself to the bodies of other kaiju and absorb their strength, shown partially when its body was merged with an ant hanju for better mobility, and shown in full effect when kaiju number 9 devoured Isao Shinomiya, immediately assimilating all of the abilities of kaiju number 2 into its arsenal. Kaiju number 9's regeneration ability is unmatched amongst its species, constantly able to endure lethal blows and find crazy ways to survive. Be it changing the location of its core or splitting its body into multiple clones in order to take care of various threats at once while protecting its main vessel. Each of these clones shares knowledge between each other and are all high level Dai Kaiju class threats in their own right. Kaiju number 9 is also able to shape shift itself into a human, seeing it fit to take Director Isao's visage more than once, be it to instill threats in its prey or emotionally manipulate its children. It's unknown how long Kaiju number 9 has been left to evolve, however, when attempting to assimilate Mina Ashiro, captain of the 3rd Division, number 9 cycles through multiple different human bodies across time periods to imply it's been around since the very beginning of the Kaiju Crisis. By being able to disguise itself as a human, Kaiju number 9 could have predated even Kaiju number 1, easily being able to slip in and out of society using average humans like an employee from Monster Sweep Inc. to covertly operate in plain sight against humanity. And once discovered, after devouring another human, Kaiju number 9 immediately assumes a new identity and is lost from the Defense Force's radar. Kaiju number 9 also has the power to create waves of energy that disrupt communication and camouflage an entire area, not allowing any victims caught inside to escape or reveal their presence to the outside world. With careful tactics and the intelligence to stealthily and patiently accomplish one's goals, who knows how long a monster like number 9 has been biding their time. Also making good on its title of King of Kaiju, number 9 can give birth to new forms of Dai Kaiju, all of identified number level. 
Kaiju number 10 was its first prototype, but 11 through 15 were all completed creations with a fortitude rating of 9.0, all capable of destroying an entire division of the Defense Force single-handedly. Although the last time Kaiju number 9's fortitude level was measured, it was at 8.5, if it's capable of spawning monsters of this caliber, each with their own uniquely specified ability, it's safe to say Kaiju number 9 has far surpassed this original recording. In battle, Kaiju number 9 is just as powerful Powerful, if not more, than Kaiju number 8. Number 9's shape-shifting ability reaches unimaginable bounds, allowing it to expand or contort its body and limbs in realistically any fashion it requires to catch an opponent off guard or just outright overwhelm them with attacks in every direction. It is fully capable of adapting mid-battle and patching any weakness that may reveal itself, mustering enough striking strength and reflexes to absolutely demolish Director General Isao before Genarumi and Kaiju number 8 could even arrive. Kaiju number 9's base punch was enough to clash with Isao Shinomiya and win the clash multiple times and its advanced recovery allowed it to continue fighting back even after the Director General had destroyed its head. Number 9 even withstood Isao Number 2's most powerful attack, capable of demolishing an entire skyscraper and leaving nothing in its wake. Kaiju Number 9 is also a large threat in long-range combat, commonly using its detachment ability from its finger. High-speed firing disembodied chunks of its flesh as bullets that can puncture the human body easily. This attack develops as Number 9 does, being used in rapid fire or all directional combos to drill opponents with holes. And after absorbing Kaiju number 2, just one finger bullet is capable of causing a massive explosion that covers a large area. After evolving into his king state, Kaiju number 9 also reveals the ability to release a strong surge of electrical energy that was enough to stun Kaiju number 8 and Gen Narumi for a short amount of time, two of the strongest defense force assets after Isao. Number 9 can also buff its already unmatched durability as well with number 2's ultimate shield, giving it great defense against any attack that comes its way. In conclusion, much like Kaiju number 8, the potential of Kaiju number 9 seems to have no actual limit. Its calculating nature and willingness to adapt, even if it means putting itself in harm's way, is what allowed it to not only become a serious threat to mankind, but hide in plain sight for so long and slowly sow the seeds of discourse until the time was right. We haven't even begun to see what number 9 is capable of since its recent transformation. And Kaiju number 9 still seeks further power, attempting to devour Mina Ashiro and others to continue building its dominance over humanity. I shudder to wonder if it's possible Kaiju number 9 at this point has broken the fortitude scale. But that's impossible to tell right now. We're just gonna have to wait and see for the inevitable clash of the two anomalies in this world to see who the real king is. Number 8 or number 9? And there you have it. Every identified numbered kaiju that we know about at least, ranked and explained to the best of my ability. Keep in mind, all of these rankings are my opinion, and I'm sure your personal list may be different. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. I sincerely appreciate you making it this far, and please consider subscribing if you want to keep seeing more content like this in your feed. Check out an end screen video if you want to continue your binge, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.